。在发掘 M 二六零的时候，我有时候就想，如果当年是穆大林不被盗掘的话，那这个大鼎就是被我首先发掘的。他有怎样的身世？又经过多少颠沛流离的过程，才最终到了国家博物馆的呢？他就在我身边，他来自三千年前，这个青铜文明的巅峰之作，它的主人会是谁呢？在冬至一九四零，在结束战争与日本侵略时，日本政府收到一个重要的礼物，从河南省为他的生日庆祝。它是一个古代的方形钟表，大小较为巨大的任何一个人所见过。这个钟表有着一个巨大的历史悠久的历史。大部分钟表只有二十公斤，最少二十公斤。But this one weighs over 800 kilograms. Among the many scenes depicted on the sides is one showing a tiger biting a human head. The inscription in ancient Chinese characters on the inside means in commemoration of Mother Wu. 外表的证据表示，这是一艘神圣的船只，由国王家族所建造的。几千年以前，它是珍贵的财富，它已经被人们称为“母亲乌”。这个钟表是来自于一个古老的博物馆，他们必须将这些珍贵的财富从一些小国家中夺回来，以免遭到日本侵略者的劫掠。But somehow, this very obvious, very heavy bronze cauldron survived the chaos of war. Personnel of the National Museum are now working to trace the unknown history of the cauldron. Ma Yanru is leading a team studying the overall technical aspects of the cauldron, as well as investigating where the cauldron has been since it was unearthed. 大鼎出现在南京，呃，引起了很大的轰动。很快，一九四六年十月十七日的《申报》就对他的这个身世呢做了一个详细的报道。啊、呃，报道很明确的说是一九三九年，大鼎呢就在安阳河南安阳五官村被农民们从田里挖掘出来了。<笑>在十月一九三九年，吴、徐、张发现了这个钟表埋在一个田地里，在吴关县的安阳、河南省。A dozen local villagers worked feverishly for several nights to unearth the huge, heavy relic. They discovered that it was missing an ear, but a search of the area failed to find it. An Yang was then occupied by the Japanese. An antique dealer, fearing it would be confiscated by the Japanese, offered a very high price for the relic on the condition that it be cut into several pieces. The villagers worked several nights unsuccessfully trying to cut off the legs. They went through over 30 steel saw blades, but were barely able to make a mark on the cauldron. In the end, they only managed to knock off an ear of the cauldron.
Wu Pei Wen and the others realized that this was not going to work. So Wu buried it in his yard. When the Japanese in Anyang heard about the cauldron, they came to search for it a number of times. Wu Pei Wen reburied it several times to keep the Japanese from finding it before he finally had to escape from his hometown. It seems strange that such an important square cauldron should be found by peasants in a farm field. The mystery was cleared up by modern archaeological discoveries in Anyang. The discovery in the early 20th century of animal bones and tortoise shells with unique inscriptions in Anyang caused a sensation in academic circles. A National Research Institute team began carrying out archaeological digs in Anyang in 1928, looking for examples of the oldest known form of the Chinese written language. Surprisingly, the Chinese archaeologists unearthed many ancient bronze and pottery pieces, in addition to the inscribed bones and tortoise shells. Best of all, they also discovered the ruins of palaces and royal tombs as well, which showed that Anyang was the capital of the late Shang Dynasty. This confirmed the written records mentioning the existence of the mysterious Shang Dynasty and revealed to the world its splendid civilization. World War II interrupted the archaeological work. The Japanese knew the value of the relics and started searching for them as soon as they occupied Anyang. The locals also knew their value, and many began raiding the tombs to get rich or just make ends meet. The tomb, labeled 1400, was the last ancient tomb excavated in China before World War II. Wu Shi Zhang was one of the locals hired for the excavation, and it was his pride that located the Mother Wu Cauldron. Wu Guanchun found such a large stone tomb. At the time, this news was very wide, and many people were surrounded by it. So, when the war was just ending, the Anyang government sent people to Wu Guanchun to dig the stone and bring it back to Wu Guanchun. 放在古物保存所，当时是万民空巷，都去看这个大鼎。Wang Zhonglian was the commander in chief of KMT's Regiment 31, stationed in Xinjiang, Henan Province. When he heard about the bronze cauldron, he ordered it to be shipped to Nanjing as a gift for Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek for his 60th birthday. He immediately sent it to the Central Museum. In summer 1948, the Central Museum and the Palace Museum organized an exhibition in Nanjing, which included the Mother Wu Cauldron. Over 100,000 people, including Chiang Kai-shek, saw the exhibition. He never imagined that the political situation would become so dire. Taking with him many precious cultural relics, he fled to Taiwan. Fortunately, the Mother Wu Cauldron was not among them. Wu 
The Mother Wu Cauldron remained in the mainland and made its way to the Nanjing Museum. The Mother Wu Cauldron was missing an ear when it was unearthed and lost another when the villagers knocked it off trying to please a potential buyer. In 1950, Zheng Zhao Yu, deputy curator of the Nanjing Museum, arranged to have another ear made and attached to the cauldron, along with the one removed by the villagers. The cauldron was completely restored. When the government established the National Museum of Chinese History in Beijing in 1959, the cauldron was shipped to the museum, where it became a major attraction. The museum was later renamed the National Museum of China. The new exhibition room of the National Museum of China was opened to the public in 2010. Some experts, meanwhile, have revised their interpretation of the inscription on the cauldron. The first character could be either in commemoration of or revered, and they believe that revered Mother Wu is the more appropriate translation. The staff of the Central Museum were the first to attempt to determine its provenance. From examination of the shape, inscriptions, and decoration, they hypothesized that it was a sacred vessel belonging to the royal family in the late Shang Dynasty. But this would require more archaeological evidence to confirm. <laughs> When a relic is unearthed in an unofficial excavation, a lot of historical information is lost, including exactly where it was found, conditions in the tomb when it was found, and clues to its importance and function. <laughs> the experts hoped that further archaeological finds would help them learn more about this important national treasure. The first step was to confirm that it was truly unearthed from a king's tomb. To do this, the archaeologists returned to the farm field to search for the tomb. The team first looked up all references to the Mother Wu cauldron from past archaeological digs. They also talked to archaeologists in Anyang. In addition, they carried out several archaeological digs in the area where it was alleged first discovered to better understand the situation. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences sent an archaeological team to make an extensive survey in Anyang in 1958 and 1959 in search of the king's tombs of the Shang Dynasty. Wu Pei Wen, Wu Shi Zhang, and the other Wu Guan village locals who helped unearth the cauldron in 1939 pointed out the approximate location where it was found. The team eventually identifies the exact location and determines that there is a huge tomb underneath. But the high water table seriously hampers progress. The archaeological team can't begin exploring the tomb itself until September 1984. 
The team is led by Yang Shi Jiang from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and Yang Bao Cheng from Wuhan University. The huge tomb was labeled M260. The long passage leads to a series of chambers. In ancient China, people of the highest status, such as kings, were buried in a rectangular layout with four passages, or a cross layout with two passages. This layout was for people whose status was just below these two. Unfortunately, tomb raiders had already picked it nearly clean. M260 历史上的这个大墓被盗掘了六次没有晚于西周的文物 Robbers had dug a large hole in the center of nearly every tomb in the imperial graveyard. A total of 12 kings lived in Anyang, capital of the late Shang Dynasty, and all but the tomb of the last king had been practically emptied over the last three millennia. King Zhou, who was the last of the line, did not even have a burial mound. There was already no way to trace the provenance of most of the bronze items removed from the tombs. Only the Mother Wu cauldron remains as evidence of the height of the Bronze Age in China. Another five holes in M260 was made by contemporary tomb raiders. The biggest of these was made in March 1939 by the residents of Wu Guan village digging out the Mother Wu cauldron. <laughs> 这个四母大顶就是这个墓里出土的People involved and the evidence all indicate that the cauldron was unearthed from M260. Later, 22 human skulls were found buried in this tomb, the result of human sacrifice. This shows that it was a tomb of an important member of the royal family. Luckily, we know the name of the person buried in the tomb was Wu because it was inscribed on the cauldron. 那么墓是谁呢相当于商朝的国王武丁这个阶段，所以他很可能是商王武丁的配偶。Excavation of the tomb 
the only one that had never been robbed, provided important evidence that Mother Wu was Wu Ding's wife. A pair of square bronze cauldrons was found in the tomb, which belonged to Fu Hao. An inscription on a tortoise shell confirmed that Fu Hao was also Wu Ding's wife. Written records and the archaeological evidence both confirm Fu Hao's identity and when she lived. The relics from Fu Hao's tomb thus served as an important reference point for dating other relics from the late Shang Dynasty.到他的文饰，还有他的结构，甚至于他的合金配比都做了一个比对，发现呢这两个大鼎有很多的相似之处，说明他们应该是来自同一个时代。就是根据甲骨文记载，就是三王五丁的妻子，第一个法鼎配